Welcome to a new episode of Wedding Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, the team from Weddings a la Mode and Mode Events joins us with a special guest to chat about all things wedding related. Now pour yourself a drink and let's get to planning. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Happy Wedding Wednesday. Happy Wedding Wednesday. Here we are again. <laughs> here we are again. I know. I feel like we're just here. Um, right. I'm going Bye. to open this can of LaCroix because I love the sound of cans. I'm you know, going to try to share it with you guys. That's the limoncello one, right? I think we were talking yes. about that. <laughs> <laughs> that one is my favorite flavor. Well, along with the key lime. I like both those. Those are my favorite. Yes. What are you drinking? Anything um, exciting? Just water. And that's so not like me normally, but it's been a long day. So I just, I don't know. Water yeah. it is for me. I need to hydrate myself. Yeah. I had too much wine last night. Um, and by too much, I don't know how much because I was with a girlfriend and it was one of those situations where we're like topping each other off. Yeah. So, and I hate that because then you never, you can't count how many glasses you've had a lot of places that have bottomless mimosas seem to do that too they just like come around and top your glass and I'm like I don't know I could have had yeah. three glasses or like eight I don't know <laughs> I think I had three because we had we had a bottle open already I think it was like halfway open and then um went through another bottle Ugh. but anyways <laughs> um <laughs> if you guys are new to the show if those watching if this is your first time, welcome. We have this show every Wednesday at the same time, 7 Central. I'm here in Chicago. And then 5 o'clock Pacific because Angela's in Vegas. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and the show is basically geared towards, obviously, wedding content, but um, really for our brides and grooms who are seeking advice. If you guys have any questions or comments, please drop it in the comment um, box below. And... We will try to address it. And if we do not address it, um, we will try to get to it next time. But you can also always email us at weddings at mode-event.com. So if there's something you don't really want to address publicly, you can just email us. So anyways, uh, tonight we have a special guest. He is a photographer from Vegas. And we will just get to know him a little bit more. And again, if you have questions, we will try to address them. So without further ado, let's welcome Jab. J-A-B. Hey. Hi. Hello, How are hello. you? Good. How are you guys? I have a Corona light. I'm just oh. keeping it traditional. <laughs> Do you? I love how you call that traditional. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's different uh, for everybody. If you can't decide, it's like ordering burger at a restaurant. If you don't know what to order, just order the burger. So that's sure. At least that's sure yeah. Yeah. Do you do lime in your Corona? I don't have lime. So yeah, I would if I did, but I don't. So have you ever done Bacardi Limon in a Corona? No, I have not. Mm -mm. That, that is some sounds, gangster uh, that stuff. Sounds a lot, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, I think. It, uh, I used to drink it when I lived in New York City. It was like on trend around, I think it was like 2008 or something when it was cool, at least at the places where I was hanging out. But it affects you. Like it gets you drunk because oh, you're, sure. th you're thinking like, oh, this is beer. But then you forget that you have. I think 2008 for me was more vodka Red Bull. Mm. If I remember correctly. Yeah, that was my 2008. A lot where of were you, unforgettable where you guys, what, where were you located both in 2008? Vegas. Okay. And then I was in yeah. Northern California. I was I in high I was, still, I was still clubbing then, <laughs> back in my yeah. clubbing days. Yeah. Well, back, to, I'm like, um, on the note of clubbing, back to your clubbing days, you're now a photographer, like I mentioned. Yeah. How did you go from clubbing <laughs> to <laughs> becoming a photographer and then a specifically weddings? How weddings. did you get so, into that whole world? Um, I started freelancing back in 2006 when I moved out here to Vegas. So I was doing, you know, birthday parties, um, family portraits, small portraits, a lot of small time stuff. Um, I did not have any idea that I would be 
dragged into the wedding industry. Um, what happened one time I was taking a, pictures of this couple from New York, upstate New York, and we were going around town in a limo and I was just taking pictures of them during the ceremony, after the ceremony around Red Rock. They planned the whole thing. Um, but the ceremony was at the Little White Chapel. Um, the Little White I've Chapel is one of the of famous chapels in town. They, yeah. They've got the drive through Britney Spears got married there. Um, oh. Game of Thrones girl got married there with Joe Jonas. Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they got married there. The The minister, the eldest that married them was a friend of mine. Um, cool. So I worked there. Well, when I was, when we were there, they said, hey, we're hiring for a photographer. Do you want to apply? I said, sure, I can work part-time. And part-time became full-time and full-time became being the lead photographer. And it wow. started from there. Yeah. I, I did not know that I will get put into. So my first month there was June, wedding month of 2009, I want to say. And we had easily on that day, Saturday, about 150 weddings. Wow. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. In one wedding or in one day? In one day. Yeah. All the weddings at a wedding chapel is like 10 minutes, right? That's crazy. And if you, if you haven't sat down, you can, you can, you can go to a wedding chapel here in Vegas, sit down, just pretend that you're waiting for a couple and just watch the whole thing happen. People walking in, they don't have plans of, you know, they, they don't have bookings. They just walk in with their marriage license. Oh, and how long does guests. it take? Like how many pictures would minutes. you take? How so many photos do you take? Let's... The I would be doing, so there's a set of photos. So you start with, okay, let's start in the green room. We'll do some pictures. There's some, you know, flowers and um, wallpaper. And then we do the ceremony. All in all, they take home anywhere from 20 to 30 photos. Um, back then you have to order prints and then it gets mailed out. They were shot digitally, but you still have to order prints and then they get mailed out. Um, mm -hmm. Nowadays, um, they're given a CD or a link to Dropbox. I don't know what system they're using at um, Little White now, but it has something to do with um, the cloud, I'm sure. Cool. So yeah, I mean, we have a set photo, a set number of photos that we shoot before, after, and during the ceremony. After the photos, you focus on like pictures with the strip, uh, the, the, the stratosphere in the background, the chapel. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember that episode where Ross and Rachel got married, the yes. initial shot for that segment was the Little White Chapel. Okay. I definitely know yeah. of it. I just haven't had a couple get married there yet. Yeah, I, I, I did not know how epic that place was until my first day. That's the one downtown, right? It's like yes, that's the one downtown. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Jordan got married there. Bruce Willis and Demi Moore got married there. If you go on YouTube, you'll see Triple H from the wrestling thing get married there in the drive through Okay. Yeah, some, some people might know. But um, who else got married there? Sinead O'Connor got married there. Huh. And I think I sent a photo in where uh, George Lucas was there, and that's how I met him. Oh, yeah. I, did I photo. that photo. Yeah. Did you what? notice him? Yeah. Let me see what is because I have I'm like I'm like super close, but um that's okay. is this like that. yeah, yeah that's that's him. Oh, okay. So the quality of the photo is because Elvis took the picture. He wasn't really <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Oh yeah. He walked in like a regular guy. It's like my daughter wants to get married. There's Elvis. That's the Elvis, yeah. He's actually a lawyer in town, believe it or not. Oh really? Was that couple yeah. trying to dress like Pamela Anderson and Kid Rock. Uh, Kid Rock. Yes. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's every night. That's every night. So do you have to be sober <laughs> to So it's it's a myth that you can married. get married drunk. If you're obviously drunk and you don't have your faculties together, a minute the minister can say, I can't, I can't get you married because you're signing legal documentation and I can't I can't do that. You know, just come back later and grab some coffee, come back in an hour. Um, we've had incidents where we had to call the cops on people because they thought that they could do a whole um, episode of Friends or you oh know, my God. other movie. Yeah, um, and it 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 gets funny sometimes, funny, but you know, it, it's just par for the course. We the chapel is literally right across from a strip club, so anything can happen. Was the, the strip club there before the church was there? I, or you know what? I think the chapel's been the chapel's been there seventy years. Okay, 
Yeah, that's so interesting that they would build a strip club right across the street from. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> or maybe they go and celebrate <laughs> after. You know. Yeah, or a bar. I wish there was a bar across the street, but no. Yeah. Do they not serve alcohol at the strip club? Um, oh, you wish no. there was like just a normal bar to go to. You know what? I don't know. I my press that's release is that I've never been inside it, so I've never seen the oh. inside of that place. Yeah, hmm. officially. Yeah. Well, then what there is a made you? Next door. Oh, what kind of, now I'm, I'm like asking all these questions. I can just Google it. But what kind of restaurant is next to the strip it's club, which is across Cuban the street? Cuban <laughs> restaurant. It's a Cuban restaurant next door. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. They, I bet they're rolling in the dough, probably. Um, yeah. I, I, would, I, would I hope, I hope they I, are. I, I hope everyone if, if it was up to me, I would open a bar across the street that says, um, what's the name that I wanted to do before it was? Oh, um, the ball and chain. <laughs> because, called the ball and chain. That's funny. You come in. If you just got married, you, you get three shots. That. Yeah, I should, right? That. I should. I'm yeah. just full of ideas. You are. So, yeah. So then, That's what, what made you leave that job? Because it sounds like you were busy. So then, what inspired you to start your own company? So the whole time, I was still doing freelance. I started on my own. I, I before doing photography full-time i was in advertising sales i worked oh, for the yellow gosh. pages yeah the yellow pages of all places um wow. and that that thing died out so i left you're dating I, yourself I, there <laughs> i know no i was but it's we okay one of the I, I know the yellow pages so it, 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 it's okay because we were one of the youngest ones to work for the yellow pages and um we sold internet advertising you know yellowpages.com and stuff like that um, so they wanted younger people to sell the internet, but I, I don't know. You can't connect the yellow pages with the internet nowadays. There's no way. So anyways, from there, um, when I, when I went full time, um, you know, I was still doing my side gigs. I would be doing weddings here and there. And the more experience I got, the more brave I got with booking larger weddings. And oh. that's what happened. Yeah, because yeah, so the chapel decided, weddings are small. Yeah, okay. the chapel weddings are small, and there's good money at the chapel because you know you get tips, you get you get your hourly, um, you get to meet a lot of people. But there is a plateau. I mean, create your creativity plateaus because you're shooting in the same space, shooting the same lighting, um, yeah. posing the people the same way for efficiency because you want to go through them super quickly. Yeah. The more weddings you shoot, the more tips you make. You couldn't even, um, like, if someone asked you to shoot them getting ready in the morning, you couldn't do that because you're tied to the chapel, right? No. Well, <clears throat> for this specific chapel, that's not something we did. For another chapel that I worked for later on, where they did more expansive productions, start to finish, reception and all that. Yes. So I could be with a couple for the whole day for eight hours um, for that other chapel that I worked for. And that's uh, Chapel of Flowers, also one of the popular ones here in town. I got married at Chapel of Flowers, so. Aw, who, yeah. who photographed your wedding then? Like, how, did you um, know right away who you're gonna have or did you have to think about it? So, uh, it was more of like, okay, who wants to do my wedding? And two hands went up and they were the two people who I hoped would raise their hands and they did Aww. it. Good, two good yeah. friends of mine, so. My boyfriend is a wedding photographer and um, I, I don't know if he's watching, but <laughs> um, <laughs> awkward. But if we were to get married, I asked him the other day, because I tried not to talk too much about marriage, but I asked him, <laughs> I, was, I was like, do you know who would shoot your wedding? And he did. So that's kind of cute that he's thought about it at least. I'm sure. I'm I, and, and I said, by the way, I said your wedding. I made it clear, like, if you were to get married, <laughs> who would you shoot I'm sure he wedding? wasn't dense enough to kind of not see through that. <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm not in a rush, but I just am curious since he's in the wedding industry. Yeah. You know, if, he's, if he's thought about that. You, you know what's funny? We, My wife and I don't have any of our wedding photos displayed. Hmm. We just don't like being in pictures like that like when we go on vacation i do a lot of landscapes me and her here and there um but i don't know it's just weird and it for me the memory is different when i'm behind the camera it's an experience more than me being there you know i feel so like it's a common through, feeling for that? photographers yeah, i was just saying i, I feel like so. a common feeling for photographers like being behind the camera as opposed to in front of the camera 
Yeah, when you when you're put in front, like when I was getting my wedding pictures done on our wedding day, I knew the script, I knew the poses, and I knew I'm not <laughs> gonna look good in them. But you know, they were still saying the same jokes. They were like, "Come on, pretend like you like each other." I'm like, "Okay, oh, I've heard gosh. that before." Oh yeah. But the thing is, the thing is with that is it's not even about the quality of the joke. If you can get them to smile because it was super corny then you're getting them to smile more naturally. So it's not about what you're saying. It's about the interaction. So the yeah. more I think couples interact with a photographer and respond better to the photographer, the more comfortable they become, the more natural the photos come out. So if I were, if I could go back to the wedding chapel days, a lot of these guys walk in and they're a range of people, anyone from like, it's their third marriage, so they don't need family and friends there because they just want to marry each other or it's their third right. marriage to each other. They've divorced each other oh, twice like, before. Oh, oh my gosh. You've yes. experienced that? Oh yeah. And then there's, there's people who are eloping. So imagine 2008 and there is this 18 year old, both of them 18 years old from San Diego and the guy's joining the Marines and they're in high school and no one knows they're getting married because she's pregnant or I don't know. Yeah, you know, something along those lines. That story yeah. is not uncommon. So um, people coming in, they're like, hey, we want to get married. Here's our marriage license. So the person behind the, the counter will be like, would you like photos? Do you like flowers? Do you want, you know, a video, DVD? And they're like, huh, we didn't think about that. Yeah, we'll do photos. We'll do the presentation. Three roses for $60. Oh, yeah. that's pretty simple see yeah no i know but it, it's you know some um baby's breath and three roses <clears throat> so they walk down the aisle well he, the, the funny thing is they 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 catch themselves in the situation they're like i thought we were just going to get married then they realize it's a whole production there's a little boom box um playing the music and then there's a minister and it's just them walking down the aisle and their their act their their witness is the photographer me so I signed oh the my paperwork. gosh, that's oh. legal. Oh, yeah yeah. yeah, 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 anyone can. Yeah. And then they start doing their vows and they catch them. And we're like, oh, my God, we're actually getting married. You know, yeah. the, 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 the enormity of the whole situation doesn't hit them until they're there. And they start crying and I start crying. Aww, you've <laughs> cried? Oh, my God. Yeah. Aww. I think Sweet. if wedding photographers don't feel anything anymore during ceremonies, they should stop shooting because you can't yeah. tell the story anymore. You won't be able yes. to tell the story anymore. I think we were talking the other day and you mentioned burnout and I don't know why we came across that topic, but it's so true. I empathize as a wedding planner. Like if you're in the wedding industry and you don't like what you do. It's going to show. You're going to. Oh my God. Yeah. It, you're going to be like, I don't know. You can just tell mm -hmm. when people just like want to come in and do their job and leave. It's like, you can that's get not stress. You know, you can get, you can get um, inundated with stuff that you need to do and it shows. But when it comes to show, you know, when the show starts, the show starts, everything stops. All the stress goes away. You leave it outside and then you just enjoy the whole moment. Like even me, who was just, figuring out how, how am I going to walk over people's toes and make sure I don't trip over something and cause a commotion. Um, even at that point, you're like, oh my God, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Cause so, you have to like, at the ceremony, you have to like get like the kiss. Yeah. Right? Have to get like wait, kiss. wait for yeah. it. Have and you ever I'm missed the kiss? Those, I'm one of those photographers who won't have any problems going up in front of everybody before the ceremony starts and says, Hey guys, my name is Jab. I'm shooting so-and-so's wedding. Um, you guys feel free to take pictures. Just don't get in my way. Yeah. You Isn't know, that so annoying these days when people are like this in the. I, yeah. Or an iPad right in the middle of the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, but I have to tell them, I have to communicate with them. I have to tell them it's like, Hey, my job is to make sure these photos are are great that they take these photos and share them with you in a few days and that you guys will love it too so because of that i want you guys to work with me if you see me coming just try to get out of my way um if you feel like i'm behind you don't stand up and shoot through your phone things like that um and then you know i make a joke about 
you know, no crying, no objecting, and then it kind of lightens the mood, and then they they like yeah. me already. So I try my very hardest for every couple I work with to have them do an unplugged ceremony. Unplugged mm -hmm. meaning no photos allowed. So a couple yeah. ways that you can do that. If there's any couples watching that are considering doing that, you can do like a sign that says straight up, please don't take your phones out. I mean, there's like language that I mess, mm -hmm. email me if you need language for it, because I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> but um, it's like, this is an unplugged wedding. Please no pictures. We have a photographer that we've paid to take photos and they'll be shared with you, that type of thing. And then also the officiant can reiterate that Correct. in the beginning yeah. of the ceremony. Like, please keep your photos away or your phones in your bags. Or They say it much more eloquently than I do, but yeah. <laughs> there are some ceremonies. Have you guys ever been to a wedding where they take your phone upon entry into the space? No. I have not seen that. I've heard of it. I've heard on some forums, I've, I've yeah. heard of like the flower girl or the phone girl collecting phones before it starts. Yeah, um, I, I don't know that if that's too. still COVID friendly right now. Nothing um, is COVID friendly. I'm like, <laughs> uh, like but everything is a problem. Put it on their their invitation, just saying, "Hey, you're invited to the ceremony. You're, you know, you're one of the few that we invited. Please leave your phones on silent and stuff like that." So yeah, you know, I, I think it's a more common thing. I try to bring it up with my couples when we're doing our consultation. Yeah. I'll ask them, like, hey, um, what do you guys prefer? Because I can talk to them if you want me to. If not, then I'll just work with it. But there is a risk that this or that might happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just weird because, like, for me, when I'm attending weddings, I'm like, I still want to take pictures, but I know I shouldn't. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, you don't know for, what pictures you're going to get. If any, yeah. if or, you're a guest. Yeah. Especially if it's a friend of mine that says, I wanted you to shoot my wedding, but I'd rather have you get drunk and have fun than work. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, I really do appreciate that. I, I you know, I, as much as I would like to be their wedding photographer too, I'd rather have fun with them. Yeah. You you shoot enough weddings. I, like how I do. often do yeah. you get how often do you do you get to be a guest? Probably not as often Correct. as you're working one. Dress up and have fun and actually lead the dance during your reception. Yeah, yeah I, I get anxiety. <laughs> I get anxiety when I'm attending a wedding. I, I really? Have, oh my god. Well, I'm yeah. I'm just Is it because you're you're t you're 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 finding out what the, the wrong stuff they're doing, or they shouldn't have done that. Or I'm just. Is it's that... hard for me to like sit in the seat as a guest waiting because. If they have a coordinator, fine. That's totally whatever. But like, I know what's going on behind the scenes. I know that like the girl, the women are running around, going to the bathroom one last time. And like the, something might've happened to the bride. Like things happen, you know, like um, the dress is torn or she can't find her veil or like the flower girl's whining. And like, I just know what's going on in the background. Or, or, or dad's drunk or we don't know where the rings oh. are or... Yeah, I couldn't imagine being in Vegas. I'm sure it's a little wilder if I had to stereotype. I've had a couple <laughs> weddings in Vegas, but they were super chill. There, there, so. there are a lot of traditional weddings that happen in Vegas outside of the strip and the wedding chapel space. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of, I've seen when, when I, I suggest that if, if you guys haven't tried it, when things are back to normal, go on a Saturday night, go to Little White, sit down in their lobby and just see how the whole thing unfolds in front of you. You can do that. Can you bring a beer? You can. No, <laughs> oh, okay. no. You, can, you can bring a drink. Like, I'm like, I'll like sit back and like watch like, Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. you can bring a drink, but um, yeah, as long as it doesn't actually show Corona light or anything like sure. that. So just put yeah. your beer in your hydro flask. And then yeah, put them in the hydro flask. Yeah. <laughs> put them in a baby bottle. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> DJ Slip said, it's okay, Jab. I choke up once in a while. We have That's a few DJ friends does. in here. Yeah. There's yeah. DJ Chris Cut, DJ Style. I think, is it Styles? I don't know. Style. I think DJ Style. I sound like a nerd anytime I say their name. And <laughs> DJ Slip. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. I... The party part, the reception part, I can enjoy as a guest. Oh, yeah. But it's just like the 
precursor of like, it, are people running late? Like I shouldn't care, but I do. Yeah. So. I, I have to always remind myself, sorry, that's, that's Snickers in the background. Aww. <laughs> She's so the cute. she's the she's my wife's patient or was. And oh. oh my gosh! It's okay, baby girl. Oh, she wants attention. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, where was I? I think that was it. Oh, we were just talking about like being a wedding guest. Oh if, yeah, yeah. Versus working. It, even 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 nice. if you're working the wedding, once the reception officially starts. That's when yeah. you can kind of sort of breathe because, you know, the bride's not going to stress that much anymore unless they have some super intricate um, timeline. Yeah. Where... You know what's nuts? I had one every now and then you get one couple that like is a little off their rocker. If I can there, yeah. And I'm going to try to be vague. So, uh, you know, just to not point fingers, but um, it was the groom and he just couldn't relax because the beginning of the day, the transportation was running so far behind. I'm not even oh, kidding man. you. The Where everyone was staying, it was about a 30 minute um, drive. And I feel, I'm like being so hesitant as if he's watching. <laughs> he's probably not watching. <laughs> Cause it's like the only time this has ever happened to me. It was a nightmare. Usually we have, someone um, on each location for the transportation to act as a liaison or the company that we hire has a liaison. It's the one time this has happened. So the day just started off rough, but um, he was texting me. He was like, why am I the one that's handling this? And I'm like, Oh my God, because he was, I was communicating with the wedding party because I didn't want to mm -hmm. communicate with the bride and groom. I wanted them to just be getting their pictures taken but he was like messaging everyone at the same time, freaking out. So anyways, I go on tangents, but um, in terms of the timeline and being relaxed, whatever, this is the one situation where he would like throughout dinner, he's like, when are we doing the next speech? When's, when's, when are we cutting the cake? Aren't we supposed to be doing this now? And like, we were ahead of schedule on schedule. I was communicating to all of the vendors. I was trying to do my best to go communicate to them too. So like what I learned early on, I was like, we're going to be doing this at this point. We're going to be doing this because we had talked about it. Obviously, like you plan for months. I think he was just nervous. He went over the timeline yeah. with them. Oh, my God. Over yeah. and over. And we even like a month out had like the final timeline review. And like I was in communication. It's not like like because I was their full planner. I wasn't just a coordinator. And I, so I think it was just nervousness because of how the morning had started. And we actually started the ceremony on time. I mean, it was nuts how that happened because everyone just like Pulled got there. Off. Oh, yeah. but like not even a minute off. It was like on the minute. Yeah. So anyways, I think I felt bad because I'm like, man, I want you to just be able to enjoy your day. Like you're only going to do this once. Like that couple, I know they're going to be together forever. And I'm like, you're only going to do this once. Just I, I wanted to be like, I told him, I was like, I have this, I've got it. Like I, you know, I had to, it came to that point where I had to go up to the, to the table. Do, do you have sometimes that belief, almost a religious belief that things almost always work out at the end? Cause for me, I, I it always has. Especially in terms of work and yeah, like overall in life. Yes. But if we want to get like super deep into like, does everything happen no, no, no. I mean, like, for a reason? For the weddings, <laughs> the weddings, the weddings themselves. Like, cause I yes. get brides who are freaking out and I'll tell them, Hey, there's always a solution. Trust the team. And there is it always, always works out. Yeah. And like, not all the weddings that I've shot have planners or coordinators. Um, so when that's the case, I will always bring up, Hey, I, I need you to do two things for me. And this will help you too. I need you to do checklist and a timeline. And they're like, what is that? Well, then when you I say checklist, do you mean the portrait shot list? Not just the shot list, oh, but oh, even oh. the stuff that they need to bring from one place to another. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're moving from the hotel to the ceremony place and then the ceremony place to the reception. That's good of you know, to do. 
Yeah, and I tell them that trust. because once you've done all of that and you know you've shared it with enough people, whether it's your mother-in-laws or the bridesmaids or you know your cousin that really wants to run the wedding, at least you know that you have less stuff to worry about as a bride. Because yeah. a lot of these brides that are getting married in Vegas from out of town, they are planning their own stuff. Yeah. And the only coordination they get is maybe from the restaurant where they're doing the reception. So um, at least for me, I tell them the reason I want this is because I don't want you to worry about where I am the whole time. I know where I need to be because you and I had to discuss it, discuss it already. And we have the paper to, to follow. Yeah. So. It's funny you said the coordinator because a lot of times. Um, so our company has DJs, an entire fleet of DJs, but we also have wedding coordinators. And sometimes when a couple books just a DJ with us, we will try to add on and upsell. It sounds like we're like doing it. It's to their own benefit, in my opinion, sure, to yeah. have us, to have us. But we offer our services to them. And every now and then we'll have a couple say, oh, we actually we have a day of coordinator. They are with the venue. And what I have to explain to them, because most of our couples have not been married before. Mm -hmm. And I explain, that's awesome. Like, I, even if I know the coordinator, I'm like, they're great. The venue, they're going to be on it but they're gonna be on it when you step into that building. They're not mm -hmm. gonna be there. When you wake up in the morning and start hair and makeup, they're not gonna make sure that the photographer is arriving on time. What if the photographer can't find a parking spot? Do you want them texting you about this? What if the food is running late? If they're getting like Panera or something? Um, if the florist is running late? If anyone in the morning, like you don't think about how much happens before you get mm -hmm. to the actual reception hall. Oh like, yeah. To me, the most stressful part is the morning. Correct. That, that's like the ceremony and it's like the party is not as stressful. So. Yeah, because there's there's so many moving parts. But when you get to the ceremony and the reception, there are teams assigned to what they need to do. But the, the pre-ceremony stuff, you're just leaving that to your brides and your bridesmaids and your mother-in-laws and your cousins and the groom and the groomsmen. So they're just waiting to be yeah. told what to do. Yeah. You know, and so. it, I'd rather them just in the moment that's why i tell them yeah, and and honestly for me um having shot for 10 years those big weddings it, it's a lot less stressful if i'm involved a little bit in that now if they say yeah we have a planner we have a coordinator first thing i tell them is like okay here send the email uh send an email to me and the coordinator and introduce so i if there's anything then they can contact me directly yeah but yeah, I, I highly suggest that everybody get, especially if you've got a bigger wedding with so many moving parts, get a planner. Always, yeah. always get a planner. We help field yeah, like the easy. logistical stuff and then the couples can meet with with you for like the vision and the Oh yeah. You know, those different shots that they want. Yeah, we can I, still I talk about them, that, but I tell them I don't want to help you plan your wedding because I want to focus on the pictures. You don't yeah. want me worrying about florists and DJs and you know. No everybody else is um you don't want your photographer to do that <laughs> yeah how so how far out do you recommend couples booking you as soon as possible so, I assume? right now the average is a year um i've had people book me for two years um wow. right now i have a couple that i've been working with for gosh a year and a half now and they're not getting married till november next year yeah so that's going to be a three-year relationship with them before we even do their wedding photos um, but on average, all my couples book about a year ahead. Even the small weddings, because some of them are coming from the UK, Asia, um, South America. So they, they book all of that in advance. Smart. Yeah. yeah. You have to really get along with your photographer and your wedding planner. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, it's nice to get along with everyone for your mm -hmm. wedding day, but it's such an intimate <laughs> experience because, I mean, you're going to get to know, you're as the photographer and the planner. We ask, okay, photo shot list after your ceremony is yep. done. Family pictures. If your parents are divorced, how, how do you much want to do, do they that? like each other? Do yeah. they are they amicable? Do they not even yeah. want to be in the same room? Like things like that come up. It's pretty personal. About, uh, step yeah. parents, you know, you have to ask them that. It's like how how do you want their pictures done? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's up to you, but it's not up to them. But still, you just need to know the list. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, grandparents, Ooh. uncles, aunts, you know, cousins. Yeah. How close are you with all of them? When people don't um, have a shot this, list, it's stressful. There's this new, I, I, I experienced this at a wedding a couple of years ago, and I've been 
preaching it quite a bit. Um, and it doesn't apply to everybody. You know how people want to do the table rounds with the pictures and all that so they can get pictures of all their guests. Yeah. So one thing that I've been suggesting, and I this was at a wedding back home in the Philippines, my, my best friend's wedding. What they did was they had the table go to them, do the pictures around their sweetheart table, and then go get their food and then back to their table. That's nice. It's, it's that. super quick. It's super quick. It goes by super quick because it takes about 30 seconds to get the picture yeah. once they're all up there. And they're super attentive because they're hungry and they want to eat. And then yeah. when they're up there, they don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, half a uh, bottle of Corona or the purse yeah. or cell phone and baby stuff on the table or this big ornament in the middle that you need to move. Yeah. To the picture. I so love that. I haven't one, seen that done, but I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing. Cause the sweetheart table is amazing already. Sometimes they've got the core yeah, in the back of it. Totally. So, so, you know, that's something that I've been telling everybody. I said, hey, it really works. It goes by so fast. And you can do more stuff during the reception. And yeah. you don't have to look for that uncle that went to smoke for the 10th time that night. Yes. So <laughs> I was going to say, that's what we have to do. We have, it's usually, I'm not even kidding. It's usually like me yelling at the second shooter to, not yelling, but yeah, having the second shooter go over to the next table, like the in next advance, table and get them ready. Yeah, get them ready while the photo the main photographer is shooting the table. But it even it never works out very well. Like I'm always no, getting involved. involved. I'm always like, yeah. At least you know. with this one, the only people you need because I've done it with a 250 guest wedding, and yeah. I suggested it to them. I said, "How many tables do you have?" Oh, we got over 20. 25. Tables. Yeah. All right. So I said, um, you know, I'm going to work with the DJ and here's what we'll do. Because they really want to get pictures with everybody. Yeah. Some it's people care, party. some people don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I said, the fastest way to do that is this process. So I explained it to them. And it went by so fast. And the catering people loved it because people weren't lined up for too long waiting for their food. We can actually control the flow. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Was it, do they have a buffet set up or a seated dinner? Um, it works only if it's buffet style. Okay. So people uh, aren't all seated, up. Yeah, for seated for the formal stuff, it could work, but you have to time it. You can either time it yeah. um, before the main course or throughout the evening. Yeah. But as long as it's not, you know, the bride and groom, they're not involved in something that's happening throughout the whole thing. You don't want to interrupt their dinner anyways. Right. So, yeah. Well, yeah. it might be on their, I mean, that is one way to, actually I was going to say one way that they could eat is if they have their dinner there and people come by and they like take a bite and then the next. Yeah, take a bite, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, because and, otherwise if you're doing the photo tour, we call it, it's like, yeah. um, they're not at their table. They're like walking no, around the whole time. Yeah. So And then people will chat them up. And then next thing you know, you can't drag them away. Cause they're doing yeah. selfies. I'm like, their, so, I've acted like their handler cause the photographers are not. Yeah. Try, try it in one wedding and see how, yeah. yeah. Cause hypothetically it's a, it's a, it's a good process. But if you've tried it once and you're like, okay, this is a good process. I'm going to, I love that yeah. idea. I'm on so. board. <laughs> I'm like so, now yeah. you're getting, you're getting me excited for the next wedding we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all about being efficient, making sure, making sure we get all of that. Yeah. I think the couples are appreciative though when they're going from table to table for the table shots because mm -hmm. if they have you or me kind of escorting them along, they have like an excuse to go. They're like, oh, so sorry, I have to go to the next one. Otherwise, yeah. they'll feel guilty and just want to like talk forever and to chat. Like, Aunt, Aunt Barb or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, haven't, I haven't seen you in a long time or this is yeah. your cousin from so and so. I'm, I'm, I'm so annoying. I when whenever a couple tells me they want to do touch the tables, I tell them I'm like, just so you know, I'm gonna be the most annoying person in your life for those minutes because yeah. I'm gonna have to be the one to say, okay, time to go, and you're not gonna want to go. go. Yeah. You're gonna have been you you'll be drinking alcohol, you'll be seeing your friend from college, yeah. but I'm like, I'm gonna be annoying. Personally. And and honestly, from a photographer standpoint, it's not like those photos come out really great anyways because you can go to the darkest part of the room and not have anywhere to bounce your flash on oh. and it's not going to work. Um, but at least with a sweetheart table, you've got consistent lighting. Yeah. Um, you don't have to change much. You're just standing there. And I swear it takes less than a minute to go through one group. So 
So if you, you could got even like tables, set up lights, probably right. You can, absolutely. yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, I love this. So maybe I'm out of the loop. Maybe there are other wedding planners watching or photographers. Yeah. Are like, but. Hey, yeah. If if anyone's doing this and you guys don't have a name for it, just call it the jab. <gasps> yes, <laughs> but now this makes me want to do that. Is that a oh, yeah, yeah, don't what's do that. a dab dab dab, the dab dab yeah <laughs> the jab but yeah try it DJs even love it too because then you know they're like oh it's super quick DJ style hey, kiwi New cool yeah, I'm from, okay, we have a kiwi what's the time difference there I wonder do you guys know offhand it's tomorrow there but I wonder I'm gonna I tend my sister lives in Japan so I always refer to the world clock. Um, to see what time it is, because my brain doesn't do math very quickly. So it's like what, 10 so, a.m. in Japan? Oh, well, in Japan, it's about 11 o'clock in the afternoon, like in tomorrow. the lunchtime. Yeah, tomorrow. But in New Zealand, they are 15 hours or 19 hours ahead. So it's afternoon three, tomorrow. 3, 3 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. How's the future? World, worldwide friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of the future, how is 2021 looking compared to 2022? I mean, I know we're in 2021, but are, um, people, are people starting to book more with you or are they still holding off? I want to say half are on the fence as far as like securing something, but so much has changed in the past few months. Like, you know, December, we still don't know what's going to happen. But now with more people getting vaccinated, I think they're more, um, they're less worried about more restrictions going forward because you know just a few months 90 days ago we didn't know if there's going to be more restrictions after the holidays yeah so um what i've been getting are more people who are booking for the fall and the winter time summer not so much i am not seeing a very busy early summer yeah. that means june the the typical um wedding season but i uh, definitely fall is getting busy uh next year is getting busy um you know i i feel like the smaller the wedding the less time they have to plan so i'm not going to be surprised if i start getting bookings in the spring for the fall yeah i'm noticing that trend of more last minute inquiries and are you shooting engagement sessions right now yes for, so for people who um book? Yeah, there's a few engagements that are in the line, but at least for the spring and that's for next year. Um, a lot of the fall weddings, actually, most of my fall weddings have already done their engagement shoots. Because um, at least during COVID, those we can pull off. We can do the small engagement sessions here and there. Yeah, usually they're outside, yeah. right? Well, yeah, they're know. outside. Uh, there's a few places where I take them. Red Rock's one of my favorites. Um, if they're from another state, and they've just moved out here um, and they have friends coming from out of town, I always suggest get some pictures on the strip. They're, they're going to want to see that. We as locals don't like that uh, strip photos that much, but your guests will be excited when they see pictures of you on the strip. Yeah. I feel like that's part of the fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And then they, and then they're like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. I work. We on have a strip. similar thing. <laughs> but have you been to Chicago job? I have family in Chicago. Well, you do cool. Yeah, my dad used to live there. My uncle still lives there. Um, have, my dad used been to, to live in Roselle. Oh, Roselle, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like the strip, it's not the same at all. But like we have this whole area of Chicago. It's like the Bean. It's like this uh -huh. silver art structure, and everyone wants yep. to get their wedding pictures That's Mil there. Millennium Park mm -hmm. or Soldier Field, all along that area. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like, like when Chicago. we talk to a couple, we're like, "Where do you want your pictures taken?" And if they're like. The Bean, Millennium Park, we're like, okay, there, there's a fountain there. Mm -hmm. And part of you goes, okay, I get it. Heard this my, before. But it makes brother, sense. It's like iconic. My brother lived there for a time, so oh. I, I visited him. Yeah, that, that's when I realized how much of a foodie place Chicago is. It is. It takes yeah. a minute sometimes to find where to go. Well, he worked for um, Let Us Entertain You. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he, really good he was a chef that opened uh, the Paris Club. Oh, if yeah. Remember that. Yeah, so that's when we visited him. He would go there and we're like, wow, do I have to pay for this? And like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let us entertain you. Just a little plug for them. They are a restaurant group here in Chicago and they have 
so many restaurants that they own yeah. and all yeah. types of cuisines, like Italian, Greek, uh, sushi, ramen. Oh wow! They have that. They have that food court thing at one of the malls on uh, Michigan Avenue, right? I probably food, possibly food life was it food life? Food Maybe life? I think it was food life. Yeah, they own so much. Yeah, and it's good. I think like good at one point they own Maggiano's. Oh, okay. Capital Grill. Yeah, and I okay. think they used to run the Paris Hotel restaurant here in Vegas. Oh, really? The Eiffel Tower okay. restaurant. Yeah, I think at one point they did. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. but. That's the restaurant world for you. I, I don't do catering. I, I'm the last one that should prepare your food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a good cook. Not saying you're not a good cook, but I, <laughs> I, I just need more practice, really. That's my excuse. But yeah, so um, how's the, how's, what, What's the wedding season in Chicago? Do people get married in good question. the, the winter so, time? Generally, June and October are the busiest months from what I've seen. But May happens to be really busy for us. Because I think what happened is last year, everyone pushed. And they were thinking, okay, May is when it's going to get warmer. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to get married as soon as they could without it being freezing. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a few weddings in definitely every weekend, at least one. Because, um, again, we have DJs and planning. And we also have photo booths. So um, what's interesting about the month of may for us is that it's like this equal mix of what people are doing mm -hmm. some are doing small weddings with live stream services added because that's another service we're offering now and some have moved to fall of this year we had a couple move to the fall of next year of 2022 one some couple one couple is getting married in a restaurant so it's like literally all over the place. One couple is considering May 22nd breaking their bigger party into two smaller parties, maybe even three, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, wow. So it's like, because May so is kind family, of Family, friends, coworkers kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, well, actually family and friends and then whoever is like left for brunch. Oh, I see. But, but I wouldn't want to be that second group. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm invited, but I'm not in the first group. Okay. Well, if it makes you feel better, if you're in that second group, the first group is like the rehearsal dinner family. Oh, I see. The second group is friends and they're getting more of a party feel. Oh, that's uh, okay. Cause that was like the original wedding date. And then the Sunday's um, brunch, but I don't know. It's it, <sighs> I think you mentioned this earlier in the call or if it wasn't on this broadcast, it was just when we were talking previously, but like finding solutions is the name of the game mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. There's always is. a solution. It, you said the whole thing's a puzzle. Um, it'll be solved eventually. It's just how you get there is the tough part. You know, where, where do you pick, start picking up the pieces and putting them together? Which section do you start with? You know, I Things hate like to that. say this because I truly like I've bonded with some of my couples. I'm sure you have. You had like couples oh, yeah. on your books for like two, three years. But like I'm so excited and I say this out of love, but I cannot wait for the day when I, ha I have all of my COVID weddings done. Like because right now it's just like this. One of my friends said it's like kicking the can down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm excited for like this is the plan and then then it happens, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like as, as a planner, yeah. As a planner, it's like, we spend all this time with a plan and it's like, no, nope, we're gonna throw it all out the window. Like, okay. The, the, the smaller weddings that I've done, even throughout COVID, because there was, there were two weddings at least, like like in the, in the thick of it, in the summer last year. So the venue was limited to 50. Vegas had yep. that at one point, it's just 50 we have that now. whatever venue, yeah, so it's 50. Mm -hmm. So they, they still did, did that wedding. And one of the videos that I sent you, the, the, the one with the photo booth, um, oh, yeah. that was only 50 guests. But Which there I'll was a show point, it now, but which oh, one is um, it? The um, one where they, you can actually see the side where the door is open. Okay, do you mind if I play it? Yeah, go and ahead. You can talk about it. And if it's not yeah. the right one, then I'll play. 
there's only two videos. So the one where they're wearing all their masks and stuff. <laughs> So I call Abraham and everybody else? Okay. So yeah, I mean, that, even that. even even during pandemic, people people, um, there was a point during the ceremony, where, I mean, the, the the reception where people forgot that we were in a pandemic. So even with that, I think when you get caught in the whole having fun stuff, and you know, when once people start drinking, they they tend to relax more and they tend to talk to yes. other people more. Um, and yeah, and that's, you know, the photo booth was there and they were having a lot of fun in it and they were moving from there to the dance floor. And yeah, that was the rest of the night. I ended Can I up show... extending. Oh, okay. yeah, go ahead. I was, no, after I, you're I mean, done, I, I want to I, show the other video. I, I ended up extending the photo booth for an hour because it didn't seem like they were done with it. That's so I told nice. the, I told the bride, Hey, you know what? I'm going to have them stay here for another hour. Don't worry about it. So yeah, cause they didn't gonna... have much to do. Let me pull this other video up. I didn't even realize we're almost, the hour's almost up, so that's oh. good. But yeah. I thought here, one second. So is that, cool. Um, is that Desert Shores? That's Desert Shores, yeah. Okay, I know exactly where that's at. Yeah. It's so nice. That was, that was actually a an 18th birthday. Oh wow. Yeah. Um we they didn't want to do the that was March, early March, so COVID was just starting. It was just, you know, it was a thing in the well, news. Lockdown. Mm -hmm. Um and the only thing that people did for the most part, I, people weren't even wearing masks then, was just checking temperatures. Oh, right. Here, I'm going to show more just for the sake of timing. So yeah. this is your photo booth. That's so yeah, that's, amazing. Yeah, that's I love it. So cool. So cool. I get to oh. drive it to the venue. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. And then I'm just going to go through, because I don't want these sure. photos to not be seen. Um, that's I at have the boneyard, the so neon bone. Oh I yeah, I've been there Ohio. before. So yeah. cool. I love I love the neon museum. And this is at Bellagio, right? Yeah, that's at Bellagio. Everybody wants photos by the fountain. This is an engagement shoot I did during COVID. Aww. They're getting married in November. Aww. Nice. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same couple. Yep. Yeah. I love that backdrop. My God. Oh, this is cool. She's a wedding photographer as well. Um, so, fun fact: I I, uh, I moonlighted as a minister for a summer at the Little White a couple of years ago, and she was one of the photographers there. So I bonded with her, and she said, "Hey, I want you to shoot my wedding." She told me she knew I was a photographer, and she saw my work. She's like, "I want you to shoot my wedding." So, wow, she was a smoke bomb. Ooh, cool. That's cool. So sultry. <laughs> it is yeah. actually. Yeah. Ooh, this is cool. I like that. Where is that that's, at? That's at the Cosmo at the pizza place. Oh my oh, god, pizza. Secret Pizza. <laughs> yeah, Secret Pizza. Wow. And this is um they just had the baby. They just had their baby. This couple uh -huh. here? This couple here, yeah. They said I asked them, it's like, where's the reception? They were like, it's a surprise. Is this Tacos El Gordo? It's Tacos El Gordo, right oh, next to the wind. Yeah. I love it. I like that that's picture fun. too. That one's cool. Yeah, these, these guys are from the UK. Wait, oh, nice. no, they're not. No. Almost has like an Abbey Road kind of feel. Oh, mm -hmm. I, th I thought you were serious. <laughs> cool. And then I'm just clicking through. Oh, badass. And that's, that's a typical wedding at the Little White. So you've got this couple. This is Chad. I've known him for a long time. He's still an Elvis uh, minister. Uh, and this couple, they're from... Brazil? No, Colombia. From Colombia, and Ooh, they rented memory. what they're wearing. They rented what they're wearing. 
Wow. They rented it at the chapel. They walked in. They said, I don't need a dress. And he's like, I need a suit. And they wow. went upstairs, 30 minutes, jumped in those, and took him off after the ceremony. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. Easy peasy. Is that yeah. alcohol probably? Yeah, twisted tea. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> Andrea. Ooh. That's cool. Downtown. That's awesome. Is that Old there. Vegas when you say downtown? Yeah, so that's behind Fremont Street. So this would be the back alley of the Griffin. I know where that's at. That's a cool yeah. spot to take pictures. Mm -hmm. Let's see or get else. stabbed either oh. way. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just this is kidding. Nice. No. These Aww. are my friends. They got married at Mount, this Charles. Was Mount Charles in January last year. This is, <laughs> I like that. That's cute. That's at the Seven Magic Mountains. That's that Kim is Lee so cute. Yeah. I love that. Did you ask them to do that or like? You know, I brought the champagne um, and I told them, I said, hey, I have some champagne if you want to bring it. So we brought the champagne out. We, you know, it's a, it's a quick hike to that spot. And then Kinley was like, I'm going to chug it. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, such like, a okay, cute picture with yeah. him laughing. I love that. <laughs> and the light's perfect. Oh yeah. My God. Ooh, I like that it's, color. These too. guys are from um, Scotland. Wow. Yeah. These guys mm. are from California. That's a typical, I want a picture by the Las Vegas sign. Yeah. But you don't want to make it too typical. You still yeah. Wanna... That one's very classy. I like it. Yeah, you want to, You still want to try to make it their own because you don't want their photos to look like someone else's. And that's the yeah, tough well, part. That's the tough part. This is and this one's at, I don't know if Angela can guess where this is. I think I'm, I can take a guess too. Tao. Go ahead, Lindsay. At the ta yeah. Tao, yeah, right. I think I heard you yeah, say Tao it. Tao Nightclub, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, is, okay. The entrance, yeah. That's cool. That's what it looks like. Where's and this? That, that's downtown mm -hmm. at um yeah. the plaza no the oh, plaza, so, hotel. plaza okay right oh by i there, thought it was um, fremont street oh cool yeah it's technically fremont street oh it is okay yeah the plaza is like the westmost part of fremont street where it's kind of like where uh the new hotel is circa, circa? have you been right? yet i haven't gone in no it's really mm -hmm. nice yeah definitely One of these days. I, I heard there's a good thai restaurant and I'm all about that Thai restaurant. Oh, yes. I've been to their steakhouse, and that's pretty good, too. Steakhouse is good. Well, I hate to say it, but I put your email down at the bottom. Um, hey, thank you. But it's almost, it's time to go. It is time to go. Yeah. Mm. But thank you so much, Jab. You're welcome. This was really great to get to know you. Um, I ho Hopefully, we can bring you more business. Like, Sure, yeah. We, we'd love to that. work with you. and Yeah. Thanks for taking the time. And I was telling, um, I was telling, um, who was I talking to? I said, if, if, Sheridan. If, Sheridan. I was telling, I was telling Sheridan, if you guys have any a company event, and if you guys want the bus over for a photo booth, I'll oh, be happy to bring it that over. That would be awesome. Yeah. That is so fun. Yeah. I love Let that. Let me know. Okay. So. Well, have a great night. Thanks for Thank having me. Um, we'll see yeah, you I, later. I, I, it's sad I didn't okay. finish my beer. Um, oh, no, it's good. <laughs> no, we were having, we were talking. That was good. We were That's talking, a good time. Yeah. yeah. It is good. All right. All right we'll thank talk you. To you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, he was cool. Yes. Yeah. And like awesome pictures. Yeah. Duh. That would be so awkward if we're like, you're great, but not your, <laughs> your pictures. <Aww. laughs> no, he was awesome. Well, uh, Angela, I will see you next week. We will see everyone watching next week. If you're watching live, thanks for joining us live. And then if you're watching in post, you can watch this full episode on YouTube. We usually upload like a week later. So um, have a wonderful evening, everybody. Good night. I'm like, do I have a drink? I'm like, cheers. <laughs> Mine's just my hydroflask. <laughs> it's okay. Have a good night. Good Bye. night.